Hello everybody, this is Krim from Septic Flash and hello to all the Impact fans. Greetings everyone, our guest today is Krim from Septic Flash. Hello, welcome back to Hungary. Thank you very much, hello. How are you doing? How is the tour so far? Tour is very good. Uh, we are relaxed because we had a day off yesterday. Mm, cool. So we're in the middle of the tour. Um, shows are very well. Yeah. No hangover? No, I don't drink. So I don't have any hangover. Some of the other guys have, but the Septic Flash crew and band, they're not really heavy drinking. Just a little bit of red wine, that's it. All right then. <laughs> uh, not so long time ago you had a special show in Mexico. Please yes. tell us about that. Well, it was special because it was the first show that we played with a real orchestra, mm -hmm. so it was a dream that this band always had, even before I joined. It's kind of obvious, you know, the band was designed to to play with a real orchestra. Mm -hmm. We do this in the studio, but live it was never an option because of the costs and preparation. But um, we got approached from a promoter in Mexico and he wanted to make it happen, so... And this idea was born in 2000. 17 actually mm -hmm. yeah and then uh, from last September till January we were just constantly in the preparation like Christus was changing the scores and stuff so it was a lot of work for that and uh, it was a very very unique experience because you shared a stage with over 100 people so it's like full orchestra the choir and the kids choir at the same time mm. and uh, in a, like a theater like we had 3,200 people that just came for Septic Clash. They came from all around the world, of course mostly Mexico and US, but people from Europe came. And it was insane, it was our biggest show, you know. Usually have support bands or whatnot, but here was just Septic Clash. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so a, a night we will for sure not forget. Something that gives you goosebumps. Oh yeah, definitely. And uh, <laughs> you're quite nervous before, <laughs> but even thinking of it afterwards, it's like crazy. You know? mm -hmm. Those are my memories. And it's going to be released on DVD, right? Yeah. We have to do, do the mixing and editing now. I hope it's going to be this year, but uh, I don't know actually the exact term in yet. All right, I mean. <clears throat> and uh, what is your dream gig like with Septic Flash? Almost like this one in Mexico. Mm -hmm. you know? Just maybe we can do it somewhere else also. It would be actually nice to have a tour like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that would be perfect if we could always play with an orchestra because it's all about the money and the organization but if you would cut that out you know say it doesn't matter then we should have a tour like that mm -hmm. full orchestra and what is your goal as a musician or as an artist mm, well i guess just to be creative and just fulfill the like the need of like presenting your art and play live you know it's just Christus sometimes says music is um it's almost like a disease, like somehow, even if you try to stop, mm -hmm. it's like always coming back, you know, it's like you cannot stop with it, so, you know, we just uh, want to be creative, you know, this is mm -hmm. our passion, and it's just nice when everything comes together and then there are four people that create this unique experience. You know? mm -hmm. And what makes a drummer a good drummer, in your opinion? Good drummer that he has a character, you know, that um, he doesn't have to be complicated, uh, he, he can be complicated or she can be complicated but it's for me important that like I hear one hit or like a couple of seconds of the playing of this person and I know it's this person something that is clicking and you have a connection you know the dramas I enjoy are the ones that usually have this kind of passion and this unique character where you say ah, okay it's, it's only he does that mm -hmm. because he has an identity I see doesn't mean that it's complicated or fast, mm -hmm. but it's just, this is the guy. Mm -hmm. And you have worked with many different bands in the, in the past. Uh, what have you learned from these bands? A lot. Sometimes it's like a musical change, like you learn a lot musically, so that's the <coughs> word. Um, and sometimes it's about touring stuff, every band does certain things different. You know, definitely my drumming changed a lot because of Decapitated, that was like the first step music business and uh, there it was important to play very well like there was the, there was not really a 
a theatrical scene, like scene on the stage, you know, no outfits, no like special lightning. It was just like you had to slay with your instrument. Mm -hmm. Then with Behemoth, it was like, you know, there was the next level to it that you also they have the corpse pain and fire, and there's the theatrical approach to that. So you learn about this, and of course, playing on bigger festivals. Receptive Flash is like, yeah, also more in this behemoth air, like style, that, you know, it's wearing the suits and it's a lot for the eye also, not only musically, like for the ears, but also visual. Mm -hmm. And um, so there's always a little bit to learn. You know. And who is on your bucket list to work with? I don't know, I don't have any specific, honestly. Not even Slipknot? Is it true that you auditioned for the uh, drummer position? Well, I uploaded some videos, yes. Oh, but right. I, I never got any official response back. So, mm -hmm. But it just blew up like crazily. You know? <laughs> the internet created the hype itself. And uh, it was just crazy to see that in like a week, even the metal newspapers you know, all around the world were all of, all of a sudden writing about it. And I didn't expect this explosion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it would be nice to work with Slipknot, sure. But on the other hand, it's for sure not, it's such a huge band. I don't want to even know what's with management and lawyers and not what not. We'll see, you know. Are you working on a new solo record now? No. Do you plan to? No, because I have, we have to do a new septic flash. Mm -hmm. So you're working on a new album now? After this tour we start mm -hmm. working intensively. We have some ideas, but the Mexico show took all the all our attention. I suppose. Yeah. And do you have any concept in your head for the next record? It has to be better than Codex Omega. <laughs> Are you happy? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. To be honest. No, it just has to be different, of course. Mm -hmm. But it's hard to say, you know. We, um, but probably we will be even more picky with what we put on the album. I mean, mm -hmm. you always try to top the one before, but now as we have a new label and we want to definitely make the next step in terms of getting bigger and stuff, so we will probably change the ideas a lot. Mm -hmm. So a lot of writing, delete again and again. And what do you think about the uh, early Septic Flash records? So before communion and Yes, stuff. exactly. Well, when I started to listen to Septic Flash it was after communion. That was actually the first album, and um, I like this music, but I don't think that it's it fits nowadays to us to our set. I mean, a lot of fans are demanding that we should play stuff from this area, but um, maybe here and there we throw in one song. Mm -hmm. But it's just I feel like it's a, <clears throat> it's a very different band now, mm -hmm. more complex, maybe more diverse also. Mm -hmm. So. On the other hand, you can always, you know, reorchestrate maybe the songs and you know change it to the uh, current way. Yeah, but then it's gonna it will be, be the difference. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know, people wanted exactly like it's on the album. You know. I see. So. And what is your favorite Septic Flash song to play live? To play live, probably like Vampire or Prototype. Probably Prototype because it's like the mix of everything. It is mm -hmm. groovy, but also quick stuff just is a nice mix of everything. It's a challenging song but it has this forward drive that mm. I like. Uh, do you have any plans for a drum clinic tour maybe? Mm, I do have drum clinics. Uh, I have one which is in Poland after uh, like in May mm -hmm. I have one and um, we'll see. I just had another one actually in Poland also last time and one in Romania last year. So whenever I have to find the time and it's it's okay then mm. I do them. Was it at the Hertz studio, the last one? No, 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 no. It was a uh, Shlansky Pekusinia drum festival. It was in, in the district of Shlansk and it was more like, you know, a couple of dramas came there and mm. it was 400 people in a theater. Mm. The Hertz thing actually never happened. It's supposed to be like a, a master class but more towards recording rather than just drumming. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what would be your advice for a beginner drummer? Um, to not lose the the, the the passion, you know, because sometimes when you start there's a progress and then there's a moment where nothing continues and you just question everything. <coughs> and everybody goes through this. It's just an, 
you always have to find ways to to find the fun and the passion and just keep the fire going you know mm -hmm. and uh, so this is very important and to not forget why you do this because if you want to do it for money then you're wrong if you do it for fame probably also wrong you know you have to love the instrument and only if you love the instrument and you have the passion mm -hmm. then you're able to push harder or practice more or yeah play tours where there's maybe no payment or whatever it's just you do it because you love it mm -hmm. yeah. some of the drummers I have spoken with are uh, kind of into electro music or tribal mm -hmm. music what about you the same you know all kinds of music mm -hmm. also classical music when I'm home I barely listen to any metal because okay there's one thing when you play it and listen to it it's a different kind but I definitely prefer to play it than listen to it mm -hmm. I know so much music already in this genre that I don't feel excited too much anymore. But if I go to electronic music, it's like a new field I have I have to explore. The same with classical music mm -hmm. or jazz. It depends. Not always, but sometimes. It's just this. This I don't know yet, so um, I feel more surprised by it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And how old were you when you started to play music? Like drums or in in general. Well, I always wanted to play drums, <laughs> but it was never really possible. But like I would say, when I was like 13, 14, that's when really the passion kicked in and it was like, okay, I'm gonna do that. And it was drums, and then afterwards I added guitar also. Mm -hmm. And before was it piano? No, I never learned piano. I have no clue, mm -hmm. nothing. It's more my approach is I take an instrument and I just try it out, and then it creates like a melody in my head and then I try to move my fingers in the right position until it sounds correct. <laughs> this is how I learned to play guitar. Yeah. Who inspired you in the beginning? Definitely, you know, at the early stages it was like Joey Jordison was very inspiring as he was playing quick but it was this energy and again this identity. Mm -hmm. It was not the mask itself, it was just the drumming, it was everything. It was, but it was understandable for me because it was some drummers go really fast or like blast beat stuff mm. I think for beginner drummers they, they don't appreciate it or they cannot understand it yet uh, but with the music of Slipknot and his drumming it was quick but I, I could understand it and I could learn from it and also lay down play it you know? mm. so I he inspired me but it was uh, later on now oh, I, I like a lot uh, Mario from Gucciere, I like, or Eloy, it's like those kind of drummers, again, identity, own kind, you know, mm -hmm. not super quick, but just the passion. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you like Joey's new band, Sinsenum? Uh I heard just a bit, it's just, uh, it's not bad, but again, as I said, I have heard so much music, <laughs> metal music, that I'm so oversaturated, mm -hmm. I really need, uh, I need something completely else to be really super excited, to mm. be honest. What was the first song that you learned to play on drums? Um, I don't remember. I don't remember. First album you bought? I think it was The Offspring. <laughs> Probably. But which album was it? Or, I, or it, I got it from a friend at school. I think, yeah. But it was Offspring in primary school and then Later on, I bought the first Slipknot album. I remember this, that's for sure. What was your first show as a fan and as a musician? First show? Poof. Well, depends on, on which. Because my dad was a musician too, and we always went to his concert, but it's not a professional band, you know. So. But um, I remember seeing Slipknot 2002. Mm -hmm. I was like small, I was just a teenager. It was quite an experience, to be honest, <laughs> because it was not like the energy they created and people went completely nuts. Mm -hmm. And it was like, okay, okay, that's what's how it's looked like. Yeah, my first year as a musician, probably with the school band. <laughs> so on the, like the school fest, when this when the year is over, mm -hmm. this is that's how we started to play on the shows, like on the on the stage. Mm -hmm. Do you have any funny tool story to share with us? Funny... Pff, 
Uh, let me think of. You know, sometimes they're crazy stories, but they're sometimes funny. But now I don't really know one which is not fucked up and funny at the same time, to be honest. So I say no, I don't know anyone. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Um, many bands have retired in the last few years and some of the musicians also passed away. What do you think? How would this affect the metal scene? Mm, I just feel that those big bands and those big headliners we always had on the festivals are not the same anymore, you know, because one day there will be no Metallica anymore, who is next? I think, I would say Slipknot is the next big, like, monster band, but after this, who is there, you know? Like, okay, we have Iron Maiden, but they are also going to disappear one day. Mm -hmm. And so I wonder, are those, is it able to have those super, super, super bands, like, um, you know, that fill stadiums, mm -hmm. that are, you know, monsters. I just have the feeling that, in this case, the scene has changed. Also, when you see now the festivals, it's always the same lineup. It's always those big bands always headlining. Mm -hmm. I would wish there's more coming from the bottom, but if it's extreme music, it has a has a limit so well of course you know back in the days you had more possibilities to create something unique because it has not been done yet so I think that's why a lot of those big bands they're icons because they have done something unique now every, every band tries to mix everything with everything and it's just very it's much harder to do something unique mm -hmm. I think this is the, the Problem. As you see, it's repeating. You know, now you have stoner bands that sound like Black Sabbath back in the days. You know, Black Sabbath always tried to have the best production ever. Now you have the best production ever, and they try to go back to the shitty production, just as a matter of sound. You know, that's the funny thing. Mm -hmm. The same like fashion; it always repeats. But it's not something new. That's know? right. So uh, it's hard to say. You know, it's just sad that you know, people pass away, but this is how life works. You know? mm -hmm. So. But yeah, I just have the feeling the big bands are a little bit, those monster bands, you know, that are like, I don't know, it's just like its own country almost, you know. Okay, <coughs> those few questions. Please name your five favorite albums of all time. I don't have. <laughs> Sorry, because it's so, so mixed. That's why. I tried once to do that, like, the ten most favorite albums, but I couldn't find anywhere, I would say. I like this so much more than this one. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Right. <laughs> um, if you could uh, pick the bands for a Septic Flash tribute album, who would you like to hear to cover your songs? A tribute? Mm -hmm. For sure I will not say Timo Porgy. <laughs> no. Not a bad choice. Yeah, but it, it's too obvious. No, I don't know. Actually, it's hard to say if you should say a band that is similar to you or not, mm -hmm. or completely something. I wonder what Gojira would do if they would have to play a Septic Flash song. <laughs> Why not? Yeah. Or maybe you can pick a composer from the past. Oh, a composer. Ah, if Stravinsky would do it, that would be amazing. Imagine if yeah. Stravinsky would do some Septic Flash stuff. Holy shit. Pew. Christos would be happy. <laughs> <laughs> What's the meaning of life? Change. Do you have any message to your fans? You guys are awesome, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Dankeschön.